Good afternoon. Good to see you again. It's two o'clock and therefore Bible study time. Time to make a few shares, get the news out, and get excited. We are rolling through Colossians. This is a um, ongoing discussion, so you're free to comment and give your feedback on anything that is said. Um, hi, Terry Lynn. Hi, Gene. Will Robinson. Hi, Mike. Nice to see you. Jennifer, good to see you as well. So it's an ongoing discussion. We're having a discussion. Hi, Linda. Make sure you tell your pastor I said hello today. Maggie Newton, good to see ya. Hi, Donald, Colonel Davis, Carol. One more share and I'll be good to go. Yeah, he's not in a mood to to be visiting. It's kind of yeah, not helpful. We it's just a good day. I'm having a good day. I'm having a good day. All right. Let's see where we stopped. We were in Colossians 2. We are going to have some fun stuff today. Some fun stuff today. There we go. We're in 3. Um, let's back up a little bit. Um, so we are those who have been baptized. We are those who have been bodied and blooded together. And we are those who seek things which are up where Christ is seated at uh, the very right hand of God. And so we're going to set aside, um, we're going to set our minds on things above and not on things of the earth. See, things of the earth are our desires. For we've died with him on the cross and our life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, appears, then we will be like him. So put to death, therefore, what is, what is earthly in you, the immorality, the impurity, the passion, the evil desire, the covetousness, which is idolatry, along with, um, and because of that idolatry, because of living for ourselves, because everything being about us, the wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience. And that's the way you used to walk, but now you don't walk that way anymore. So you, you must put, put away the malice and the anger and the wrath and the slander and the obscene talk from your mouth. <sighs> My poor tongue. I had to do my best to not say bad words, and I still say them. Don't uh, lie to one another, seeing that you've put off your old self with its, with its doings, and you've put on a new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image after the image of its creator. Verse 10. And put on the new, the new person, which is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of uh, the one who created it. So remember, Jesus is the icon of the invisible God. And you then are being made into the icon of the image of the invisible God. That's what's so very, very important about this. Don't miss this. God in Christ has washed your sins away and made you 
to reflect his glory. And notice that that is not if you work really hard, if you strive really hard, if you do the things that, that, that I tell you to do. This is what you're being made into. And since this is who you are, since as um, Colonel Davis pointed out, hi, Bobby Joe, since as Colonel Davis pointed out, uh, and Cheryl and Sue in Michigan, not to be consumed, con confused with Sue in Washington. Um, this is who you are. And since that is who you are, then you're going to put away the idolatry. You're going to put away the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the fleshy things. You're going to put away the impurity and the covetousness, which is idolatry. You're going to set that aside and, along with the anger and the wrath and the malice and the slander and the obscene talk. Because who you are is one who has been redeemed. That's who you are. And so what he's telling you is, Christ, who is your life, is, is right, Will. Looking at myself, I see no resemblance to Christ because all I see is my old Adam and all its desires and its sinfulness and its want to get ahead. But what if, Will, what he says about you is true? That you are the image of the one who is the image of the invisible God by faith by baptism, by the word, by the body and blood. This is who you are because this is whose you are. And, and, and let's be clear, Maggie, God does see it because he sees Jesus. Not that there's some better person living in within, within will that if we could just tap into that better person, excuse me, you could just tap into that better person life would be so much better. That is pride. And the old song, Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. I mean, but your perfection is the completeness of the it is finishedness of the suffering and death of Jesus. And here's the clincher for us today, living in the world that we're living in. Here it comes. Which tells you that this is all about baptism and not about your progressing into better and better and better. You already are better because of whose you are. You got it, Rick. It is Galatians 2.20, only Colossians style. Um... And if it is Colossians 2.20, I'm sorry, if this is Colossians style of Galatians 2.20, does it stand to reason that if it's in there twice, we should maybe pay attention to it? We should have paid attention to it if it was in there once. At the top of the page. Where? There is uh, uh, not Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free man, but all and in all, Christ is all and in all. And, 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 and he holds that to the end. Remember I said in these ancient languages that what is first and what is last is em emphasized. Because, because of the way the language is, Latin and, um, and Greek, because they use endings to do um, cases, where they put words it makes things, that makes things important. So there is, so in this place where you are baptized, in this place where you are the icon of the invisible God, in this place where you are being renewed in the knowledge of the image of the one who is your creator, in this place, 
There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free man, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. Christ is in all and Christ is all. And this should be our reaction to slavery or racism or any place in which anyone judges their neighbor based upon what they look like. Don't defend yourself. Uh, this was a video short yesterday. I could have used this verse, but instead I was using Philemon. Don't go into how you have to defend yourself. Don't go there. Don't don't start with the we were so poor we couldn't possibly have earned my my and my um, my great 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 grandparents were so poor we couldn't or we fought for the North or. Or, um, I have black friends and family. Don't, don't, don't go there. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Instead, I would run to your Christian faith. You talk about something that would disarm the world. Go to your Christian faith. I believe Christ is in all and Christ is all. That's what I think about when I think about, um, the concept of race. You're importing race to me. I think Christ is all in all and, and is all. He's in you. He's in me. He's, he's in all of us. And faith saves. Another way of saying this is the way I said it in the video short, and I hope that somebody can find it, which is, um, which is Christ died for all. Christ is not going to the cross and God, I'm sorry. I'm not dying for you Germans. No, no. So, so this is a big, 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 big thing, which, which amounts basically to hatred. And instead of defending ourselves, I don't hate run to Jesus. You want to talk about somebody who'll make people run away from you and not want to have a discussion with you about it anymore. Just reference Jesus. Jesus believed that the only way to save us was to die for all. So he did. And that's, and that's how I see the universe. Thanks, Terry Lean. That means a lot. Instead of doing um, the other thing, which is self-justification, which then might lead to Phariseeism. And you end up being the most woke person who is the most closed minded person about anyone who holds this, who holds a belief other than yours. So I reject the whole thing. I'm not going to have it among, among us. Christ died for all. That's the way I see the world. Now, that is not to mean that you don't confess your sins. Confess where you have hated people based upon something about them or judge them based upon a tattoo they had, how they talk, how they think, where they're from, and the color of their skin. Or Jew or Greek. Barbarians in there too. That's German. Remember the Romans called uh, the Germans barbarians because they, because they, they, as they're sort of engaging them, all of they sounded like was bar, 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 bar. Not an old 60s songs. Bar, 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 Anyway. Um, so the answer to this hatred is that doesn't happen in the church. It doesn't. Not in the Lord's church. He, he doesn't play Jew or Greek slave or free, male nor female games. Now, that doesn't mean he eliminates the genders. He gives each gender-specific gifts. But when you stand before God, Terry Lynn doesn't have to worry about her, her dad being circumcised in order for her to be saved, which is the way it was in the Old Testament. Sue doesn't have to worry about being connected to her husband in order for her to be saved. Stan Hansen is here. How awesome. 
Instead, Christ has died for all. In fact, the most despised are the ones that he cares for most. Look at the difference between the way he handles religious people, the Pharisees, and the way he handles sinners. Woman, where's your accuser? Neither am I accusing you. The woman at the well. The apostles are all like, does he know what kind of person she is? Well, yes, he does know what kind of person she is. In fact, he tells her, why don't you go get your husband? And she says, well, I don't have a husband right now. He's like, well, you've had like five husbands and the, the guy you're, you're shacking up with isn't your husband. God saves sinners. And that's the way the new Adam should be too. This is when somebody asks me all the time, well, you know, when you preach the gospel, it sounds like everybody could be saved. Like, don't you want that? Don't you want everybody to be saved? Well, well, yeah, pastor, but you, but, but, but you know what I mean? Not everybody. Well, who would you like not saved? Lest you write me a four page single space letter. Those who reject Christ, those are the ones who are damned, but that doesn't stop Christ for dying for all in order to save all. All that means is that the very sad truth of hell is that nobody's in hell who hasn't been died for. There is absolutely no reason for anyone to go to hell. None. Well, what about their sin? But yeah, that's why they went that's why they go to hell. The sin of impenitent unbelief. But Christ died for them. Christ rose for them. Christ lived for them. And still does. There's no reason for them to have worked their way, because that's what you do, to hell. No reason. That's why we plead with people to be reconciled with God. Because there's no reason that anyone would go to hell. Think about that the next time someone says to you, I don't believe in a God who, doesn't go, who, who sends anyone to hell. I would say, I don't believe in that God either. The God that I believe in died on a tree on a hill far, far away so that no one would go to hell. The only people who go to hell now are the people who work their way to hell by their stubborn rejection of the one who died and rose again for them. I know. Got a little sunburn. It gets me all... But it's true. This is the glory of the gospel. If he died for all, that means he died for Terry Lynn. That means he died for Rick. That means he died for Stan. That means he died for Sue. That means he died for Heidi. That means he died for for um, for Will Robinson and Will Robinson's family. He, the, sorry, Will. That means he died for um, Maggie and Bobby Joe. That means he died for Erica and and Carol and Donald and Betty. And Colonel Davis. And Maggie. To die for all means to die even for me. What comfort. This is a gospel that even a sinner like me can be saved. Because in this gospel, there is neither Jew nor Greek, circumcised or uncircumcised, bar, 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 Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Think of the worst people that you could possibly think of. You ready? Ole Miss fans! As my my uh, administrative assistant doesn't, I mean, he hate, he's like old school LSU fan, hates Ole Miss. He died for Ole Miss fans. And he died for Bama fans. And he died, if you're a Bama fan, he died for LSU fans. And he died for baseball fans and hockey fans. He died for blues fans. He died for things... For people who have tattoos, he died for people who don't. He died for people who are brown, blue, purple, green, yellow, red, uh, sunburn, people who look like vampires. This is the way I normally look. He died for all. And that means he died for me. For Christ is all and in all. 
Think about that gospel and be comforted by it. Don't look at this section like, well, this tells me how I have to continue improving and go up the chain. No, this says that even you are saved. And this creates a, a, a new word from him which changes you. From a person that looks at Jew, Greek, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. From a person full of anger, wrath, lying, slander, and the like. From a person who is full of lust and pervertedness and porn and the like. To one who who has the knowledge of the very image of its creator. Jesus who has joined us together, knitted us together, and made us one. There's another thing which is against any sort of separation in the church. You could answer the same question. Are are, are some people more equal or some people better than others? No. He puts his body and blood into each of us and bodies and bloods us all together. That's the church. We are his body. And in that gospel, how could you not put on then as elect of God, holy and beloved? How could you not put on? Um, how could you not have a compassionate splagna, compassionate insides? And, 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 and how could you not Forgive one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. And how could you not deal with other, one another in kindness and humility and meekness? How could you not? Because God in the Lord has forgiven you. So you almost almost must also should forgive others. And, and this is going to cause me to have a little meltdown here. So just strap in for a second. Because the, the culture of the world is showing its true colors right now. And there'll be video shorts on this next week. But the culture is showing its true colors. It is an unforgiving culture. That believes in an unforgiving God. Because we are, by nature, unforgiving people. And so Maggie has some whacked out views 25 years ago, and I see them on Twitter, and I take a screenshot of it, and I throw it on a thing, and Maggie's out. She loses her job. She loses her livelihood. She loses everything. It's the cancel culture. She is effectively canceled. She goes out and apologizes. I shouldn't have said that. She says she's changed. But the people who make these rules will not forgive her until she's done the proper penance. And amazing enough, the penance looks an awful lot like an indulgence because sometimes it involves money, which is our chief God. But to forgive, Maggie, to absolve her. I have no idea how to do Twitter. But yeah, but to forgive her and absolve her would be to release her from her sin and therefore no longer have any power over her. Because the cancel culture is about power. We're going to determine for Maggie what she can and can't say. And we're going to have power over her if she doesn't cross the line And if she does cross the line that she shouldn't cross, we're going to hold it over until she does the steps which make her right with us again. And we have to step out of this because it's anti-Christian. This is what I mean by this. Since Maggie doesn't know Twitter, I'm going to use an example more toward um, toward her world. Maggie, I do not know if you have a family. 
I'm gonna let's just say you do, okay? And you have um, a teenage daughter. Lord have mercy. And you sin against your teenage daughter. She believes you violated her trust, even though you're you're just being a parent. You read her text messages. She says, you violated my trust. And you say, well, I was just being your, your mom. I was looking out for you. Well, you violated my trust. I can never forgive you. You see, the unforgiveness allows us to hold that sin and then use that sin to get what we want. See, the cancel culture learned this trick from us. This is the way we behave when we don't forgive. To forgive would be to release it so that Maggie and her daughter can move on. You know what? I forgive you, Mom. But to do that would be to actually let the thing go so that we could move forward in relationships. But the cancel culture... And our sinful flesh doesn't want to forgive so we can still hold back things. Maggie, I was just guessing, but I'm going to use an example from my own childhood. My mother can tell me exactly. My mother is um, a dear little Roman Catholic lady. Um, before COVID, would go to Mass every single day. Um, probably one of those little hats. Hey, Chappie. Um, and uh, she would say, every now and again, I would call her. I remember when you were 16 years old and you told me that, that, that your girlfriend's mom's cooking was better than mine. Oh, it broke my heart. And I'm like, I'm 47. Could we move on? But to move on would be to release that sin and let our relationship go forward. But to do that, we give up the power. See, if we hold somebody's sin, then we can sing, I've got the power. The 80s song, you know? Um, just imagine me sort of dancing. All right. To give that sin up would be to do that. With the culture, the same. To forgive people who have said and done stupid things would be to actually let them go. I know. I know. I'm 16. I'm a stupid idiot. I, that's actually the second or third time I've sung, McKim. They, they missed, the, they missed, Cindy's behind. She missed him. I just, I just, this is what's anti-Christian about the cancel culture. That's what's anti-Christian about it. You got to spot it. You got to recognize that that's not, that's not Christianity. That's not the faith that you hold. And distinguish between the way the world runs things and the way we run things. In the faith of Jesus, which isn't us running things, but the Lord running things. God in Christ has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of light. He has called us by name. And washed our sins away. How could we possibly ever hold anything against anyone again? Let's look at the text again. Neither slave nor free, barbarian, Scythian, Jew, Greek, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then again as God's chosen ones. Holy and beloved. That's who you are. 
You are holy and beloved chosen ones of God with compassionate splagna insides. You're going to put on kindness. You're going to put on uh, humility. You're going to put on meekness and long-suffering. You're going to bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against each other, you're not going to call everybody in the church. If I had a dollar, I'm going to bet Chappie has the same thing. If I had a dollar for every time someone has gotten mad at me for something I have done as a pastor and talked to everyone but me, I would never have to do videos. I could retire. Imagine a universe that if we had a complaint with each other, we didn't call the prayer chain. Which is the gossip mill for most churches. Imagine a world that if I had an issue with Maggie, I took it up with Maggie. That that if I had a that I had a problem with Will, I wouldn't talk to Cheryl about it. I'd talk to Will about it. Like, Will, here's my problem. Every time I see you, I think, danger, Robinson family. Did it again. I said I wouldn't do it. Right, well. And now Will can say the problem I have with Borkart is that every time I see him, he looks at me and he starts waving his arms like a robot. Danger, Robinson family. I know. Oh, doubt. What a wonderful world this would be. That is who you are, though. When you act otherwise, you act contrary to who you are. You act differently from whose you are. Live Bible study is the code to use at store.higherthings.com. In order to get discounts on cups and everything which has our old stuff on it. This cup is like five years old. That's why it's kind of messed up. But it still keeps the stuff good in it. And it still is dare to be Lutheran. Which means dare to believe that God has called you in Christ a child of God. Not by what you do and don't do, but by the grace of God in Christ Jesus. Received by faith alone. And how do I know this? Scripture alone. That's what it means to dare to be Lutheran. Live Bible studies the code. Big discounts. You can leave there like pretty woman. You can leave the Higher Things merch store this week like pretty woman with all your bags of stuff. You're like, look, CBD, you could have had all my, all my Christian money. But instead, higher things got it first. Big mistake. And I just turned over my man card to Chaplain Towns, who's Pastor Towns now in Michigan, um, because of knowing that Pretty Woman reference. Bearing with one another. Bearing with one another. Enduring one another. And, if, and, 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 and forgiving each other if anyone has a complaint. Just as Kathos, also the Lord has forgiven you. Thus, also you forgive others. That's just uh, like hutos kai humes. Um, in the same way you forgive others. So he's forgiven you, so you forgive others. But I love 14. Epipassin. Um, like, uh, to all or, or above all, um, uh, you, you, uh, you, 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 above all these things, Love, which is um, 
the teleotetos or the the it is finished bond. I think you should translate it that way. But above all, put on love, which is the it is finished bond. sort of bonds everything together. I just love that. And I want, the reason why I want you to translate it is because of the perfection word again, um, which is really, um, uh, which is really the, 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 the it is finished word is that drags you back to Jesus. Doesn't it? Drags you back to Jesus. Why put on very baptismal language there, my friend? Very, very baptismal language there. That's what's going on there. Baptismal language. That's why put on. Put on that baptismal language. We love that baptismal language. Well, we love it because Paul does. So this is baptismal will because you, whoever has been baptized into Christ Jesus has put on Christ. So you put on these things. Everybody following? Good. So above all, put on it is finished love. Above everything else, put on it is finished love. which binds everything together. 15. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To which also you were ekletheta, passively called into one body. And give thanks and be thankful. So you have to sort of take this in that this is all because you were called, which is also, Will, baptismal. You were called into one body. What's that body? Well, it's, it's the church, his body, the corpus mysticum. The mystical body of Christ that is bodied and blooded together. Look at this. Rick and, and, and Towns having, um, having this, this reunion here. Bible studies that bring people together. Isn't it magnificent? It's, it's like, we, like they put on love, which binds all of us together in, in an in a fin in his finished way. So so what's going to rule your heart from now on is not the stuff of the lust and the body and all of that jazz. What's going to rule your heart now is is peace of Christ, the forgiveness of Christ, the mercy of Christ, the love of Christ. And I don't want you to miss this. This Gentile community in Colossa, which has some Jews in it, 
needs Paul to tell them how to love and how to be a family, how to be a church. Hey, wake up. People wants to see you. Come here, boy. He was not pro that. Nope, he's asleep. The people in Colossa, this church filled with all sorts of diversity. Greeks and Jews, Scythians, barbarians. They need to know to learn and learn to love one another. And so, so he tells them how to love one another. And he shows them how to love one another. And he wraps it all up, not in, in a catchphrase or something like that, but he, but, 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 but he wraps it all together in Christ and his love for us on the tree and his making all things new by his holy life and his bitter sufferings and death. So let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. In all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another or yourselves, one another, Psalms, hymns, songs, oops, 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 let's try that again. Psalms, hymns, songs, spiritual ones. And, and spiritual ones that mean here full of all the stuff that came above, which is Christ, the icon of the invisible God. With thankful hearts, with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in work, all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Eucharisting to Theo Patri de Autu, uh, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Don't miss this because it's full of the gospel. This is how you Gentiles should behave. You have no clue how to be to church. You only know how to do, how, how to do the, the religion of temple prostitutes and the like. So set aside the sexual stuff. Don't do that. You were bought. Don't need to lie anymore. Don't need to cheat. That's not who you are anymore. That's not who you are anymore. So let's work through how to live in this faith that God in Christ has given you. But not as a slave driver telling you how you got to do or else. This is who you are. Because of whose you are. You're a forgiven people. A called people. A baptized people. You're his body. So let me tell you how his body behaves. Or better, how his body is. How could you not be? You've been forgiven. And in everything, whether you're wording it or deeding it, you're doing everything. You're doing everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means in your baptism. That means confessing your sins and receiving forgiveness. That means when I mess up, I tell Terry Lynn, you know what? I'm sorry. 
And she looks at me and says, Pastor, you're forgiven. Because that's who we are. Not judging people by their appearance, but instead... Understanding that while we were yet sinners, while we were pagans, Christ died for us. That we've been crucified with Christ and we no longer live, that he lives in us. And the life we live now, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave up his life for us. Jesus in me has only love for you. Me in me has a bunch of other things for you. And none of them are nice. So I'm going to die to myself and put on Jesus, for you, so that everything I do in this life would be for you and not for me. To build you up rather than to build myself up. To love you as God in Christ has loved me. To forgive you as God in Christ has forgiven me. Because I'm not my own, says Will. I was bought with a pride. This is gospel-run sanctification instead of you-run sanctification. Because this is who you are. To live otherwise is to behave differently from who you are. I've said this example before, and I'll leave you with this example. My kids used to be like, all the other kids are doing this. And I would just simply say, well, that's, that's, that's not how Borkart's rule. That's not how we roll. Not really sure we have ever ruled, but roll. That's not how we roll. Like, like, uh, hi, Judy. The Lord be with you. Um, Judy, we resume search for services, by the way. I hope we see you soon. Um, like my son going into sixth grade. Dad, everybody has a phone but me. This was about 10 years ago. I said, really? Everybody has a phone but you? Well, Dad, there were like four people who don't have phones. And me. I said, well, son, we don't do phones until eighth grade. And besides, you have to love your neighbor. Because if you don't, if you were to get a phone, right now, then there would be those four poor people, poor sobs, who now they're going home going, now George got a phone too. You got to love your neighbor. Because that's just not who we are. We don't do our, we don't do that to others. And he's like, and then like a year later, he's like, dad, I'm a pariah. First, that's a great use of the word pariah, son. I'm the only person in the seventh grade without a phone. Well, now we can talk to you about getting a phone. We're not everybody else, son. This is the way our family behaves. And that's what he's saying here. You are part of God's family. This is how his family is. And it's top down. He words this into reality with you. Right, Terry Lynn. He words this into reality with you. He doesn't pass the Terry Lynn tree and go, produce fruit or else. No, he waters, he loves, he forgives, and good works flow from a good tree. Good trees bear good fruit. You're saved. This is how you are as God's people. You are forgiven. So you forgive. You're loved. So you love. You've been died for. So you die for others. Tomorrow, wives and husbands, children, today, we're all singing together. We're chanting together. We're loving together as we have been churched together, bodied together. He did curse the fig tree, but that was because it had no fruit, Maggie.
tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, we'll continue our study of Colossians. Saturday 2, um, 2 o'clock, Central Daylight Time, as we learn more and more about the God who calls us forgiven, who calls us children, who calls us mercied, and then enlivens us to put on mercy and forgiveness and love and kindness and the like. Have a blessed day. See you tomorrow.